When developing in a local environment, prior to posting to a web host, you can and should validate your basic HTML and CSS. The tool I prefer and recommend is the Web Developer Tool by Chris Pederick, which is available for Chrome and Firefox. This short video demonstrates how to use the tool for validating local HTML and CSS. First, ensure that your local server or servers are running. Second, open the page you have to check them one at a time into your browser. If the page is being served over the internet, then click the Web Developer icon, choose the Tools tab, and click either Validate CSS or Validate HTML. The URL is sent to the W3C Validation Service and a report is returned to your browser. However, if the page is being served using a local server, then you must click the Web Developer icon, choose the Tools tab, and click either Validate Local CSS or Validate Local HTML. The difference here is that the tool then copies the code from the local source and sends it to the Validation Service to check. Once checked, a validation report is returned to your browser. Note, for some reason, the local validation for HTML does not work in Firefox. To demonstrate, I have intentionally created errors in the HTML and CSS of this example file. I will validate both and show the error messages and how to use them to fix the errors. We'll begin with validating the local CSS. You'll see that the error reports a missing semicolon before the property name of width, which is on line 17. The keyword here is before. Looking at the CSS, you'll see that it is line 16 where the semicolon is missing at the end of the statement. Add the semicolon and save the file. Return to the browser, reload the page, to update the code, then revalidate. This time the CSS validation should report no errors. The HTML validation report works the same. Validate the local HTML. Carefully review the validation report. You'll see that four errors and a warning are reported. However, there are only two actual errors in the code. I did this to show that the real errors can lead to multiple validation errors. You'll notice the first error message reports that the probable cause is a missing greater than symbol at line 11. In this case, the less than symbol on line 11 is highlighted. This is very similar to the CSS error. It is showing the first character after the error, so we need to check the lines prior to line 11. Sure enough, if you look at line 10, you'll see that the closing bracket is missing. Add it, save, return to the browser, and reload the page. Then validate the local HTML. We still have an error. Again, carefully read the message. It says that an A element is not allowed as a child of an unordered list element. Remember that the only allowed child of an unordered list or ordered list is a list item. But notice the line number is 18. Returning to the code of the web page, we see that line 18 has nothing to do with an unordered list. So what's up? Then look closely. You'll see that on line 12, we are using a PHP include. Remember that an include brings all the code in the included file and injects it into the web page. Opening the included file, we find that it does have an unordered list and the first item in the list is an anchor element that is not inside of a list item. Add the opening and closing list item tags around the anchor element, then save the file.
return to the browser and reload the page. Validate the local HTML, and this time the error should be gone and the page is reported as valid. Be sure to validate the HTML and CSS of your views or pages to ensure that all code is valid. If all pages share the same external CSS files, then you only need to validate the CSS once. The key to validation is to carefully read the error messages that are returned to discern the hints that are provided.